Hello, everybody. Hi to some friends online that are watching. Um, we're going to finish out the day talking about two things I love, and a lot of you probably love too, and that's cars and technology. So I thought I'd start us off at the beach uh, and, and learn, just, just kind of understand a little bit more about this word utopia. If you don't know what it means, the definition is an imagined place or state of things in which everything is perfect. When I was thinking of this presentation and how I could deliver it, I really do believe I'm achieving a bit of utopia in my own life. If I think about an imagined place, I think about walking on the beach with my wife and my dogs running free. And then when I think about work, I think I'm living in this 3D design utopia now. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick overview of my company um, and share with you some in-house gear that I'm using, some, some tech you might not have heard of. Um, and I'll go through uh, some of my workflow to share the secrets of the trade that I'm having success with, and then finish everybody off with a story I've been holding on to for five years, uh, under development, complete Skunk Works project I couldn't talk about, but I saved it for this show. So, I started my company in 2014 after retiring from a great career at SolidWorks. I had a great job, made, made great friends there. Uh, got to travel and see how products were made and you know, knew if I was gonna leave SolidWorks that I would have to do something myself. And um, so I made that decision in 2014 and bootstrapped my own design company with a main focus on car products, car accessories, um, and that has led to some great clients right out of the gate, uh, which I'll share with you a few, few stories. Um, what I didn't expect to happen and has happened recently for me is uh, in recent months actually, I've been sharing some spy shots of work I've been doing and that has led to new intriguing, interesting and funded projects involved with me not only designing for these projects but being a co-owner in new brands, which is really exciting. So. Um, really jumped off the cliff, started my own company, and hoped this would happen. And you know, five years later, four, four years later, it's, it's starting to happen, and we're starting to have some fun. So, but specifically about vehicles, um, I've gotten a chance to work on some pretty kick-ass vehicles in the past few years. Uh, Factory 5 we're going to talk about this afternoon, uh, but I spent some time in Indiana working with a cool RV company, a Universal Trailer Corporation, one of their brands was Hallmark, and they're making these gorgeous motor coaches uh, for people that like to drive around and, you know, uh, in style. I mean, that thing is beautiful. So I, I did some aerodynamic work on the front cap there. And uh, another exciting product, the Icon A5 aircraft, um, got to work on a secret project for them. And I, all I can tell you about is that I worked on that project and, and great group of guys. They've got big challenges ahead to uh, sell that product. It's, it's, it's spectacular, great company, keep an eye out for them. But the, uh, let's jump into the gear real quick. So there's my tool set. I'm only gonna talk about uh, the things highlighted in green. And so, um, but like it was said before in the, the earlier presentations, like you just kind of get a hold of as much as you can, make the best jazz you can, and build cool stuff. Um, this wasn't automatic for me. I, I went through and tried a bunch of things. Obviously, I was a fan of SolidWorks. I was working there. It, it gets the job done for me, but I needed other things to produce cool cars. So that was my mission, and I ended up with this tool set. And then, down at the bottom are some brands that we've heard about this week. I'll just highlight one I got really excited about was the SimSolid. Um, this last week I, I had a demo of SimSolid by Ken, who's starting a new way to do simulation uh, in the cloud, which I, I was really impressed with. So I've got my eye on the ones in orange down below. So let me tell you about this magical piece of software. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, it has really saved my ass on projects. It's an add-in for SolidWorks that allows 
mechanical engineer to do things industrial designers are used to doing in packages like Modo or Maya or 3D Studio Max. This thing lets me basically design with digital clay. It's fully integrated in SOLIDWORKS. As soon as I saw a demo of it, of it I was hooked. I've been wanting it for 10 years um, because curve modeling in SOLIDWORKS is only going to get you far to make awesome looking shapes. So the first thing I do when I dive in is make a cheat sheet of what it's going to be able to pull off. And so the, the little chart I made on the left here was just to produce for me a, a gauge on when I tweak uh, parameters in the software, what are the end results going to be? And this is a, you know, a parametric model, if you can believe that. The model, the surfaces that I make are tied to a fixed dimension wheel arch on the car body. So it's like the best of both worlds. I get to be creative, but it also can be engineered. It's not just an art contest that I can't make and, and have that fit over a, a car chassis. So un, I can't say enough good things about it. It's inexpensive. If you don't have it, you should. If you work in SOLIDWORKS, it, you're going to get a lot more creative with it. Another product I've been using a ton of lately is this affordable scanner called the Peel 3D. Um, it is entry level pricing for this level of quality of scan. Um, what you see over here is a uh, real time scan of what is a leftover or a recycled Tesla motor. Uh, I'm scanning it instead of trying to reverse engineer it and measure all that stuff. I'm just scanning it. It was in an accident. The car rolled 20 times, and the engineers at Tesla designed one hell of a aluminum cradle to protect that motor because it was perfectly fine. It's actually getting repurposed and being put in a, a Porsche race car down in uh, Hartford, Connecticut right now with some friends of mine. And so I'm using this Peel scanner every time I want to take geometry that I don't have time to model and get it into my CAD package to make new things, brackets, mounts, whatever. So if you don't know about that scanner, you should. When it comes to virtual reality, uh, my journey with VR started about early 2017. And I'll tell you a little bit deeper of the story of how that all transpired. But I landed on the HTC Vive. It was just the best tool for me and what I needed to do to, to use VR in product design, not just for entertainment purposes. Um, to see that CAD in the head-mounted display, my CAD, I, I landed on V-RED by Autodesk. It is just a great render package. It does exactly what I need. It communicates photoreal images. It communicates with the HTC Vive uh, with no problems. Um, and there's people out there designing really cool studios and templates for you to use if you're designing cars like I'm doing now. I can just drop them in and do all this stuff that the big auto companies are doing with, with clay and all that stuff. I'm doing it digitally in, in my home office. And then to show clients what I'm looking at or uh, what anyone's looking at in the VR, I mean, you can't beat a $500 60-inch LED screen these days from LG or anybody. So I, the, the $3,000 you know, high-end computer workstation monitors are, you are, don't really cut it anymore. I mean, I, I can't buy enough of these things for clients and bring them on. I bring them down to projects when I'm in the field. So. That's my media set up, my peripherals. What you saw in the opening anime, video that I made was uh, footage from a local company making the world's fastest high definition camera. Um, high, basically, it can take a million frames a second. This company is a startup in Burlington, not too far from here. And a friend of mine wanted to film some high speed samples to try out the, the footage. And, we are, we're getting really cool shots with it. it. It's mainly for scientific things. I mean, you can slow down a, a bullet going through something. Uh, but um, having some fun with this thing beyond just using a GoPro, cool local company. And now what I think I'll do is show you a little bit inside my workflow, what I'm doing with car design these days. Um, this is inside a body shop in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, not that far from here. And the way I would tackle a project that I'm interested in is go through this workflow. 
And uh, sorry for the small font, but this is the process that I'm using now, and it's a living document, a living process to try and do things fast, accurate, and uh, with great results. So I'm not going to go through the whole workflow, but I'll show you some of the first steps using that technology I just highlighted. All right. And so if I give you a sample scenario with cars, I do have a client that has a Lamborghini right now, an older Gallardo, and he wants it to look freshened up. All right. He wants this styled body kit for it that he can't buy. And you know, he basically, how do we turn this into that very quickly and get him what he wants for parts? So if you're not familiar with composite tooling, making fiberglass, making um, uh, carbon or Kevlar, you basically, your end game is to make tooling. So you can pull a lot of parts for a lot of car owners and not just one guy. And so this is inside the shop and this is a very manual process and I'm trying to improve the way they actually make this tooling using digital technology, not the handmade stuff. So let me show you a day in the life of scanning real quick. First thing we'll do is the scanner needs to calibrate off the little tablet there. I add targets to the part in, that I'm interested in, in this case the hood. I do a quick top side scan with the peel. That gets captured instantly with the software that it comes with. And you can control that. You can align it very quickly. You can clean up the mesh. It's very easy to use software that comes with the scanner. If you've got two sides of something like this case, this has a bottom definition with the ribs to support the hood. I can combine those two meshes together really quickly to get it into CAD. Here I am in SOLIDWORKS now using sub-D modeling to start to play with this digital clay I now own and can play with all day long to start working through what I'm going to deliver for tooling for this customer part. But you can see how much different it is to use than drawing a, a spline and then extruding that shape. I mean, trying to do something that organic in a basically a mechanical engineering piece of software is just hasn't been the case until this software came along. You had to use other, other packages. And I didn't want to use other packages. So you can get pretty wild pretty quickly. And it's useful data. It, it's converted to a solid, and I can actually start doing tool pass to make um, whatever I want, send that to a mill, and off we go. So that's a quick taste of, of the tools. Now I'm going to share with you a big story that I've been holding on to, and that's my Halo project when I started my company. I had to think about how can I bring attention to the brand that I was going to start? And I couldn't think of anything better to focus on than a supercar that I could dream of and I could afford. Um, so I had my plan in place and I got to work. And my number one goal was just to make this thing the sexiest looking shape I, I could ever imagine. You know, I think a lot of us will agree when we drive down the road, we're kind of disappointed that the designs are falling off um, in the modern automobile. So. I knew if I took on the car myself, I'd be happy, and it would bring up some conversations with other people that would, would allow me to build the business into where I wanted to grow, which was car accessories. So this project started in that room, about an hour from here. It's the showroom of a, a great company called Factory 5 Racing. They have an awesome product line. Some of you might know the company. They, their number one seller is are replicas of cars that were built in the 60s. You know, the Cobra, the hot, uh, the hot rod was from the 30s. They just launched a, uh, a truck based on a 35 Ford. And the way back there under the lift is what I had my eyes on. They had a product, and they have a product called the GTM, which is a supercar that you build yourself. You don't need a half a million dollars to own a supercar. You don't even need that many that many tools to build a supercar like that. The kits come just like this. You get a 
space frame, you get a gel coat body, you get aluminum panels, a bunch of rivets, and instructions on how to build it. You get to pick what tires and wheels you put on it, what engine you put in it, and you get all that pride of ownership that you just wouldn't get by going out and buying a Ferrari or Lamborghini, right? You know, so it's, it's a big thing these guys are doing. They're delivering a lot of dreams to people that, um, you know, thought they, they might not ever get to own their dream car. So here I am trying to design my own dream car. I knew this was going to be the, my platform. So I get the kid home and I ask myself, well, before I think of my own great shape, what do other people consider a beautiful shape? And not surprising, it, it did turn back to the majority of people think the human shape is some of the most beautiful forms. You know, at a, and I was looking for products, and the, the answers were coming back like this. So needless to say, I was interested in making a curvy shape myself, something that really could um, stand out. And this is where I got to about a year later after sketching and using power surfacing in SolidWorks. So I was building the kit, proving out the lines I wanted for my car in my garage, all while doing the CAD and getting it to a point where I could really start to be happy with it. Um, you know, the benefit of using SOLIDWORKS in this case, or, or you know, a, a traditional CAD package is this thing is real data. I, I, you know, I, I went through the whole chassis, modeled every part, and we can manufacture those parts, right? The, the data is shared. It, it's all native to SOLIDWORKS. And people used to tell me, you know, like, whenever I asked people what they were designing with car people, they'd say, everything but SOLIDWORKS. So SOLIDWORKS is good at mechanical engineering or mechanical stuff, but not surfacing. And, and I had to agree with them. And that frustrated me because I didn't want to learn another package. I just wanted better surfacing. So between the two, I had everything I needed to get this shape to the level I wanted and uh, to, to make a real halo car to a point where I started to realize I was making a platform, not just a car. As, as things changed, as the product, project was going on for myself, the industry was changing. You know, all supercars are getting away from gas and going to electric. This kit normally takes a Chevy V8, you know, gas powered out of a uh, Corvette. And so, you know, if you look at, you know, good, get into these projects, you realize it's a platform. You can put any kind of drivetrain you want in these things at a low cost. Um, and so I was really pushing the shape as far as I could before I was ready to show anybody. And so I started to show my friends what it, what it was looking like. And they were getting very excited, like, how can I buy it? Where, you know, when are you going to be done? I said, well, first thing I'm going to do is show it to the, the guys at Factory 5. I want to see them, show them that where the tech is going. Um, and I got to this point, my unveil day. Behind closed doors, these were the words that were shared with me. Okay, I've been working my ass off to do something really special here. And I got some validation. Great work. But I really don't. You know, they couldn't really understand what they were looking at just from my computer screen. You know, uh, they need to see things in full scale. They're used to hand shaping bodies, not just looking at a computer screen. And uh, that costs money, as we all know, to make prototypes. So I was frustrated, I, I got to say, when I left that, you know, that meeting. But I, I'm not kidding when I tell you, not two or three weeks later, I get a message from a friend of mine through LinkedIn, of all places. All that it said on my LinkedIn profile was that I was working in advanced automotive you know, projects. No idea of, you know, no, no sharing of what I, the project was. And my friend worked at NVIDIA. And he said, we love cars. You know we do. Can, you, can we work together and you know, solve problems? And I said, well, I have one immediate problem. My clients and, and people in the industry need to visualize CAD data better. And he said, get to California, attend our conference, and you're going to see where the industry is going with VR. So this is early 2017. I flew out there, and I shared my data set with them. This is in their booth. People were getting to see cars, not just you know, simple stuff, in VR. Um, it was drawing people into these booths to, to try out all this new tech on the scene. There was demos all over the place. You could walk through the, the NVIDIA headquarters that wasn't even built yet in VR, do fly-throughs. It was an awesome conference. 
And VR was just a very small segment of that conference. There was AI, there was machine learning, there was you know, just uh, incredible topics to, to digest. And in the end, I, I got what I needed, which was a perfect tool for not having to make a physical prototype just to sell an idea. Um, and so uh, it's just how life works sometime. I, I couldn't believe that it happened so quickly after a, a trying to share this with others. And so you know what I did? I got my ass back to Factory 5 as soon as I could. I bought a system. I landed on the Vive, like I told you. And this is Dave, the owner, in VR. He had never tried VR before. I printed out all the project that I was working on, the effort that I made to do this right. And I said, hey, this is what I can do with your supercar. And if you're having trouble seeing it, you won't with VR. And if you did have trouble with it, then I knew it wasn't my problem at that point. I, I was convinced the technology was there, and it, and it is. And so that was a very successful day. Within a week of him seeing my stuff in VR, we filmed a TV show on the hot rod truck, but we showed the technology using my design and what a small company like his can do to compete with the big guys. You know, he can't afford a clay studio and 10 designers working on a car. These guys are hand building cars, small 50 person company. They do amazing stuff, but they need technology to win the battle. They have the, the same battle everybody else does, time and money. So there we go, you know, kick in the doors, solve problems. That led to a conversation to this second project. I couldn't believe it, it, it came on so fast, but you know, when Dave made up his mind, you could tell we were going someplace. And he had said to me, great work. I need you to help design another supercar. I was like, holy shit, I'm not done with the first one. So the story leads to this thing. And this is a 65 Daytona Shelby Coupe replica. It's a front engine supercar that you build yourself. It only, you know, these kits don't cost that much money. If you're interested, they're usually somewhere between ten and twenty-five thousand dollars. Okay. The original version of that car costs somewhere in the ten million dollar range. Okay? Something you wouldn't even want to drive. These customers drive these things, you know, like crazy, and they should. So, with that background of using these tools, finding the technology that's going to work for me, it didn't take long to jump in and start designing a kick-ass front engine car. All right? This time I had to work with his R&D chief because, you know, um, Jim had a vision. He was the guy designing the chassis that's going to work for this. I was the guy that was going to help style it and get this thing looking sweet, looking modern. And we used power surfacing. We used V-RED. We used uh, the VR system um, to a point where I'm sitting right by him, two guys in the back room, nobody knows what we're working on, and we're just iterating really fast, right? Not having to cut prototypes. We're I'm making him put on the goggles. He could go off for the whole day working on something else, come back, see what I'm working on in real time. We figured, and Dave figured, why not film this? Let's show people what we're doing to be innovative. You know, why not? You know, this technology is here. We should be all using it. And um, really, I, I could feel an energy that was just, you know, really special down there. And um, we did all this in two months. The process for these guys to launch a car usually takes two years. Just launch a prototype. Now I'm going to finish with this company, Symmetrics Composites. They're located down in a beautiful seaside town of Bristol, Rhode Island. Um, kind of a boat building town. Composite specialist. I can't speak highly enough about this company. Fantastic. You know, another big momentous day in my life when I met these people and I got to work with them. We all know about 3D printing. Usually when people ask me about 3D printing, first question out of their mouth is, what's the volume of the cutting surface? <laughs> and it's, it's tough. You feel like a salesman for the 3D printing companies. Well, it's only going to do this much. You've got to slice up the model. This monster that they have at Symmetrics is the largest mill in America. 
It can cut a volume 80 feet long by, or one of the largest, 80 feet long by 20 feet wide and 10 feet high. That's the cutting volume. They're used to cutting boat hulls. They're, right now they're cutting the America's Cup yacht hull. They cut wind turbine blades. Um, it's an amazing place. And hopefully some of you get to visit, visit this place. Um, you should. It's really cool. So we didn't have a volume problem here with cutting. Um, now, we chose these guys because we're trying to eliminate steps in the process, the expensive steps in the process of prototyping. You know, no clay studio, no even scale models. Just use VR to design a car. Can we do it? And then get it to these guys to cut not the shape, but the tooling. And so this is my final video. I'll show you something that just happened this past summer, the second supercar design. It was cut in one day by that company. And uh, the car itself, once we're done building it, will be launched sometime in 2019. And Dave's going to add that one to the product line. And then um, you know, I just also want to say thank you to Martin. Thank you to Al for inviting me here. You know, I, I waited to share this story for a long time. And I always knew I would share it here. You know? um, and I'm just honored to be with you. And thanks for letting me share the story. So let me show you inside the Poseidon. That's what they call the machine.